<laughs> well, uh, you do too? Thanks. <laughs>
Um, we're going to hear from the 375th Celebration Committee with a request at 7.30. Um, we're then going to go into executive session briefly uh, to discuss uh, a real estate matter. Um, we'll come out, reconvene at 8.30. We'll be joined by, if not the whole Housing Authority, members of the Board of the Housing Authority to discuss that real estate matter and sort of other issues going forward. Um, then we'll have minutes and uh, then we'll adjourn. So that being said, uh, liaison reports. Uh, I started this uh, last time, this time, so I'll start with John Halsey. Um, I don't have anything since we were last together, although I have a very full lineup between now and our next meeting. Um, audit committee is trying to find a date. Um, <coughs> The Recreation Committee is actually going to meet on a date other than ours, which is great, on the 12th of June. Um, so I'll be there. Um, and also, Conservation has got a meeting coming up. I was going to ask you, Andy, have you are you making a presentation there? No, no, that because was because I saw some emails yeah, going no, back and that forth, was, and that was I just a, was wondering. Yeah, maybe, I'll, I'll I'll include that in my in in, in my report. Good. Yeah. All right. That's it. All, that's all I got. Mm -hmm. Mr. Yes, Chairman, uh, the volunteer appointment subcommittee met uh, twice already last well, week. Sounds like felt like ten times. It did. We, we had uh, many, many incumbents coming back in for interviews. It was uh, enlightening. Uh, we we learned some new things about every board. I think, which is part of the reason we're we're doing the incumbents yeah, again. I I found it very helpful. Yep. Uh, we also have new people, which is, yeah, which is even people. better. Yeah. A lot of new people. Uh, now, the upcoming schedule, and this is for the benefit of the rest of the board, uh, there will be two meetings this week, uh, tomorrow night and Thursday at 7 p.m., and one meeting next Wednesday, and maybe more depending on demand. Uh, I'm thinking of posting next, I don't know if this poses conflicts for people, posting next Wednesdays as a full board mm -hmm. session so people can attend and participate. If any member of the board wants to sit in, uh, I would just simply ask you observe the rule of not speaking, not asking questions, just observing, and I think that would cover us with open meeting yeah. law. Yeah. So you're welcome to come either uh, Wednesday, Thursday, or next week when we'll have the full posted meeting. And we may have one or two more. So, Dan, is that going to be a board meeting, or is that well, just posting it so that we can come? posting it in case you come. Um, oh, okay. All right. Supposed to be allowed to attend the desk. Yes. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. one? Right. It'll be a vast. It'll be a vast meeting, not a selectman's meeting. Right. So the, the notion I'll was. Sure. The notion was is that um, mm -hmm. I think when this sort of came up was because um, you know one of us is going to step down and, and and one of the newer members was going to actually we we're going to do a two-year term and a one-year term. So I thought it'd be helpful to have some at least yep. to Makes observe. Sense. So. Um, but again, not to not to post them all. Um, I can attend on the sixth, which is the Wednesday. Yep. What okay, time good. is that up? Uh, it's usually seven, seven, I think. I'll be out of town. We we usually in the burger room. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Sure. Uh, one more item: uh, the cable TV negotiating committee uh, met today and is reviewing the final language <coughs> of the proposal, the counter proposal going back to Comcast. That's going to be finalized next week, so we, we have some final tweaks to do on that. That's all I have. Okay, Vanessa? Uh, no liaison reports for this week, um, but I did attend the Memorial Day um, celebration and, and remembrance um, organized by Kevin Bowmiller. Um, he did a phenomenal job. Um, it was really well attended, especially considering the weather was less than ideal that morning. Um, but it was nice to see a lot of families out. So to celebrate, that's it. Yes, I, I, I'd like to echo Vanessa's thoughts, and kudos <coughs> to Kevin and uh, all the people, people who participated. I thought it was, uh, it was well done, really well done, very moving. Um, so uh, I'll, I had, uh, I have several liaison reports that I'll try to whip through. Um, the school committee, I went to a school committee Monday, or on Maple, May 11th. 
there was a lot covered there, so I'm just going to give you the highlights. Um, the material is pretty deep. Um, so there was a presentation by Understanding Disabilities. Um, they've been working in the kids with kids in the classroom about understanding disabilities since 1984 at no cost to the taxpayer. Um, so that they gave a presentation. Then um, the director of student services, who's with us tonight, Carolyn Wilson, um, gave a great presentation on the special ed program in the. Uh, in the district and my take home from that was it's clear that 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 the schools are in, in Reading is facing a very deep need that's complex and is a, I think it's a big challenge to any school district um, and um, she gave a great summary of the program's achievements uh, their, what they're struggling with and their plans to continue to improve then there was a pre presentation by the CPAC co-chair, Sarah McLaughlin. Um, she described their mission, and uh, she works closely with Ms. Wilson. Um, they're basically a great resource for parents um, with special needs. Um, they bring in presenters from the outside. So, so they were uh, pretty good presentations, but pretty complicated and, and pretty deep. Um, Conservation Commission, I got in touch with the chair. I think there was a misunderstanding. She thought that I was asking to do a presentation with the CONCOM, which I have no desire to do. I, I had asked her if I could present um, some of the highlights of the last meeting, and so she called me. We got that straightened out today, and she mentioned that uh, it was a short meeting. Ryan, uh, the town uh, engineer, Ryan Percival, oh, Ryan Percival yeah. um, get, presented a, a flushing of water mains along Main Street, um, <coughs> a section of Main Street up to, towards North Reading into Mill Street. Um, they approved a small project to remove a deck on a single family home to do it in addition. And she wanted me to stress that they're down two members come the end of June. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're aware of that. Yeah, so, um, I just following up on the response to her climate advisory committee. Um, we do have actually, we do have some have people that we do. Yeah, yep. yep. good. Yep. She'll be she'll be happy to hear that. Yes. Um, the Climate Advisory Committee is planning for two events, upcoming Friends and Family Day, which I want to remind everyone is on June 16th from 1030 to 3 at, in the Birch Meadow area. Um, and they're going to actually have a, um, an event where people can make bags out of old t-shirts. So I thought that was mm -hmm. kind of cool. And then they, they come to us on June 19th for their presentation and they're working on that. Um, just as far as a report is concerned, I wanted to point out that Jane Burns from Elder, Sir Elder and Human Services sent us all an email on June 4th um, at the Pleasant Street Center. There's going to be a program um, by <coughs> the, the Council on Aging, Police Department, and the Middlesex Sheriff's, Sheriff's Office on, and this is the important bit. Um, identifying and protecting yourself from existing and emergency, emerging scams. So again, that's Monday, June 4th at 1215 in the Pleasant Street Center. Um, and on a personal, a personal note, I just have to thank the firefighters who found our elderly dog wandering along Summer Street uh -huh. and picked her up and brought her back to uh, my my wife and um, she's a great dog and I'm just really grateful to the firefighters mm -hmm. who, who did that. I think it speaks a lot about the people who serve our community. And that's it. Okay, great. Um, I don't have much. Um, I do want to echo um, what uh, what Vanessa said about uh, Memorial Day. This town does Memorial Day the right way. Um, it, it, the parade and the quality of the programming is incredible. Um, we are blessed to have Kevin as uh, our veterans agent, not just because he throws a good event, but some of the day-to-day -day work that he does serving our veterans. Um, it was a cold and kind of dank, drizzly day, um, and, and maybe the crowds were a little smaller than they were in the past, um, but people came out. Um, and I do want to say, something about the guest speaker that we had. Um, a former captain in the Army, 
Vietnam veteran um, who is also a Gold Star father, whose son was killed in Iraq in 2003. And what he does right now is he goes around and he just, he works with families, Gold Star families, um, works with them and just and st and tells the story. I mean, the story of, I mean, hopefully, I know RCTV, I think that they, they may have done it. I hope that they, people have, they're watching this. Please view that. The story that he told about his son um, and the letters that his son wrote home weeks before he was killed uh, would just bring, you know, tears to your, to your eyes. And um, a really, really moving, moving speech. Um, and then also at the Senior Center, um, and, and I'm sorry, I forget her name. Uh, there was a, a woman who is an artist who does this for free. She ha takes no money, uh, but essentially she has a tribute to every Massachusetts soldier that has been killed in action since 9-11. And there have been hundreds. And the Vietnam? Well, there's the Viet there was the Vietnam piece, but what she's done is she's taken a photograph of, uh, has a photograph of all of those uh, soldiers and she does a pencil drawing mm. that if you stand like, from where I am to the wall you would think is a photograph but it is a pencil drawing and it's an alphabetical order in Velcro and every time there's another one added she does it and it's a wall, it's a moving tribute it was at the senior center um, I've never seen art that way and, and just to hear her talk about it she's an artist by trade, she does family portraits but she does this out of her own pocket, and she travels, and uh, she's been honored at the State House. Uh, I hope we can get her back again. That was just an incredible, incredibly moving day. And I also do want to compliment my colleagues, uh, Vanessa and, and Andy, um, both who made speeches at some of the cemeteries. Um, very well done. So I, I think I think we do this really well. Um, the only other thing I wanted, uh, I just want to add is. Um, after our last meeting where we talked about uh, when we talked about liaisons, we had a discussion about whether or not we wanted to add contacts to the to you know uh, member contacts to um, various projects. Um, I decided that that was a really good idea, um, and so if there is uh, interest in participating in that, just uh, raise your hand, let me know, um, and I will um, for our next meeting sort of add that to the um, to our liaison assignment um, and just and just do it and then we'll take the vote at that point. If there's no interest, um, let me know. Obviously I don't want to assign anybody to this. So like if you're gonna, for every project you're gonna assign that to an individual selectman? Correct. That doesn't, uh, that doesn't, that doesn't mean that no other selectman can get involved in that project. It just means it's a point of contact. Um, so um, if there's interest, let me know. If there's no interest, let me know. Obviously, I don't want to assign something to if someone doesn't really want to do it. Um, but I just thought that, that we were going in that direction, and I just uh, decided that's a good thing. As a one-year plan, if it, if it doesn't work, if there's no traction, if there's no, if we get in, in, in each other's ways, we won't do it again. But just as a, as a one-year kind of experiment, I just uh, thought we would do this. So the write-up that we got the last time is going to be the, no. the mission? No. No, that, has that was just a discussion point. All right, so would, would the protocol be that uh, if a resident has a question, there's usually a staff person on point, public services or elsewhere, police, DPW, that they should contact first and then we would, Absolutely. Be, the, we would no. be the backup. Right. That. No desire to, right. to, to, to step on the toes of any of the staff. Oh, no. Um, you know, because that's really the first point of contact. But as you know, People sometimes don't know who to call, mm -hmm. and if it's out there that you know this project A, uh, there's a selectman contact, right. then then basically take the call, forward it, make sure it gets, and then. Does this up happen this after time. CPDC or ZBA is done with their work? Correct. It's got to be a pro right. It's not going to be. So just are they aware of that? Have we discussed that with the chairs of the those two committees who are directly involved in all of these projects? I think or it might have to start prior to because some of the projects have discussion underway well before CPDC yeah. and ZBA get involved. Right, but well, but, but that's not that's no, it's got it's gonna so basically there's five projects. So it, it won't be a liaison to a project because we already have a liaison to CPTC and zoning. So uh, but this will be just for, for projects. We have two liaisons, right? To C P D C correct. Yeah. And I think zoning as well. So yeah. So um, if there's interest, so it'll be the projects. So it'll be only projects 
that have cleared those two volunteer committees. Correct. Because we shouldn't be stepping on their toes. Right. We're not. No. Right. Good. We're not. So, uh, as a point of reference, for example, we have Eaton Lakeview that has come before the board, and we've had uh, Lincoln Prescott come before the board. Right. Now, both of those where the residents have gotten involved have been before the projects have hit CPDC right. and ZBA. So, in this scenario where you're saying with the lead, the contact from the select board only gets involved after, it means that none of us would have been a point of contact for those residents in all these months leading up to this event. This is not a project, right? It, and, and, and we have liaisons to those committees. What I'm concerned about and what the discussion was, was that um, we're going to have five projects going into the ground at the same time, mm. right? We've never had that before. So. Um, all it is is a reference point. All it is is a point of contact. We're not getting involved. We're not assigning, we're not going to assign a liaison to a project that may or may not get passed that's before a committee that we don't have any standing in. These are projects that, so it includes the Sunoco Station, it includes Gould Street, it includes Lincoln Street, it includes the Post Office. Um, and, 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 and Lakeview and Eaton is, is, you know, before the ZBA now, um, will be a project. Oh, and Woburn Street, if I didn't mention that. I mean, if there's, if there's other projects that come up, well, that'll go through the process. And it yeah, they're, they're going to yeah. so they call us anyway. So, so I think before the fact, that's the, the appropriate thing is for them to reach out to either the board as a whole or any one of us. Um, and then, I mean... Will they attend those public meetings at those, uh, yeah. at those boards? I mean, yeah. they're going to, you know, people live here are going to, you know, take whatever action they feel is appropriate, and they need to be allowed to do that. And we shouldn't be limiting ourselves, although I do understand and agree that once something is cleared, both the other volunteer committees, and we've got all but one of those that you mentioned that have done that, the other one shortly to have cleared that, if one of us chooses to be a, you know, a central point of contact, for a project that is ready to go in the ground, that seems fine to me. And I shouldn't limit anybody else at this table Correct. from t having a discussion right. with anybody at any time. So if let's say you're the, you know, post I'm office. making it up, post yeah. office, right? And then someone says, hey, what's it calls me, what's happened with the post office? I'm not gonna say, oh, you have to talk to John Halls yeah, right. about that. You should talk to him. Right, and then if there's an issue, <coughs> then protocol might be, hey, John, I just got a call from yeah. Joe who's had a question, maybe, you know, do you know the answer to that or yeah. whatever? So again, nothing to, nothing to limit our participation. All it is is to kind of, Give people another another set of content because I think what's going to I mean I think what's going to happen in six months we'll have all these projects going on yeah. and the phone's going to ring it's just another thing and you know what if it doesn't work well, if we find that we're not being productive mm. next year when we do liaisons we'll can it right. so I'd like to add one suggestion as far as these contacts which is that for major developments that may come in even before they are at a point where they're going to break ground Eaton Lakeview is a great example where the neighborhood got organized and wanted to come forward. I think for a project like that, especially one of that scale, it would have been helpful to have a point of contact right. for that neighborhood, even though at that point, especially considering it was a 40B, it doesn't even hit CPDC. So, yeah. But they came But they came before they the full board. So They did, but I think it would still be, would have been helpful to them to have one point of contact that they know that they can rely on to get back to them. Okay. So we can, perhaps we can tackle that on a one-off. I guess a natural fit for me would be the St. Angus uh, Lower School Project. So I'd be happy to liaise to that one. Okay. I've been very closely involved with the post office project from yep. from its yep. infancy. So okay. that's fine. Um, so I assume you guys are uh, all right. So we'll we'll figure out unless you have a, a, some choices. We'll, I'll just pick and we'll vote it on the next. No all right. So I, I well, it took way too long, but I apologize. Sure. Sure. And again, remember I had no dinner. So <laughs> well, at the end of the meeting, I'll make for a quick meeting. Make for a quick meeting. meeting. I make me angry at the end. So I apologize. All right. So I'm done. Um, public comment. Mr. Brown. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Member of the Board of Trustees. I'd just like to pass along thanks to the boys from the cemetery. Um, when yep. Frankie and I showed up uh, well, one morning, we sat putting up the markets. It was out of chaos, but Mike uh, Hanford came and brought right. his crew in and did a good job. So Great. everything worked out well. It, it did, and, and, and I was at all four cemeteries. Um, and they've never looked better, mm -hmm. and I know that there's 2,200 flags that got planted. 2, in how much? 
2283. I, I apologize. <laughs> uh, and the plants got laid out. And, and, and I gotta say, we've got two people back here that helped us tremendously. <laughs> They, they were the billy goats on Laurel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, <geez. laughs> our, our extreme gratitude and thank you and thanks. <laughs> Seriously, the, the cemeteries never look better. So, but th thank you for that. And I got to tell you, about three weeks ago, you would have come. You would have. That's what I mean. This town does Memorial Day the right way. You pulled the people from the back to the department, and we did some things that were great. Um, okay. Any other public? Oh. Doctor? Nancy, Dr. Phil Street. I just want to follow up, Dan, you had brought up the Volunteer Appointment Committee. Yes. You know, again, I, I kind of regret that you haven't decided to include chairs in your um, interviews. But include what? that being said, uh -huh. Ch chairs? Chairs of any of the board's committees oh. in your interviews. That being said, sure. this is your agenda that you've posted. So anyone who's interested in going to these open meetings, we have a really hard time following what committee boards you're interviewing for. So if there are interested chairs, committee members, board members, or just interested public mm -hmm. who would like to attend these, I'm asking that you please post what are the positions that you're interviewing on those nights. Well, can, I, can I respond? Um, is it, do we know enough at the time we post well, the agenda, which has to be 48 hours in advance? I, I mean, all for doing that, if, if it's doable. Kind of, but also, yeah. on the other hand, we're not necessarily going by committee. We tried to in the beginning, based yeah. on the response we had back. We tried to do, you know, all the applicants per committee. But now that we're getting into um, the end of it, we still have applicants coming in here and there, so we may have one coming in and another coming in. And we're still trying to confirm appointments with people up until up until five minutes before yeah. the meeting. Very yeah. close to oh, when they're okay. supposed to be okay. in. So, I mean, going forward, I could put down at least the ones I have confirmed, but there may be others yeah. that or, you know, even if you put on there, you know, not confirmed, because it's just for, yeah, for yeah. the public. This is really it. not transparent for us to know who wants to go to an interview, particularly board members and chairs. <coughs> Who wants to sit in on your interviews? In, in uh, support of that thought, uh, we do publish like a one pager when, when everything is yeah, set for schedule. the evening. Right. Can yeah. we put that somewhere on the website where people can? I could. I mean, I could schedule like yeah. an hour before yeah. you guys tend to meet, but I could. If we could do that, I think. I could put that. And yeah. you'll see the details. Because, I mean, honestly, I think it's a tremendous amount of pressure to put on two board members to have that. <coughs> area of expertise for so many committees and boards that I think it would only behoove you to have other people yeah. in the audience that actually bring some subject matter expert to the table for those interviews. Well, just, you know, the other thing too is that, you know, the, the flip side of that is that this board got criticism for um, calling up people who were interested and said, okay, you have to come Tuesday at 6.30 right. and it's right. like, it's now that, the it's like Monday. So what we've done is that we, we've scheduled probably, I gotta say, eight or 10 of these meetings. Yeah. So, and, and they've all been full. The other thing too, Nancy, what makes it a little bit difficult, although I, I, I do see your point, is this, is this year what we've done is we've asked people, okay, I know you see you're interested in the finance committee, but tell us what other things you're interested in. So we're getting in forms. People are checking off three, four, five different committees that they might right. be interested in. And then when we interview them, we're interviewing them sort of holistically. So, you know, it's like, okay, well, we might not have an opening on conservation, but man, you'd be great on trails. And, and, and so we don't know. That yeah. should be public information that people yep. at the open meetings are here. Right. But this, yeah. I have a lot of concerns with this agenda. And this is how okay. all of your... Well, we just explained why we can't make it more detailed, but we did yeah. give you a workaround, too. Yeah. I think that you yeah. can I think you can do more right. and you get more people involved yeah. in this. And I appreciate the transparency. And then, you know, of course, all the, all the resumes and all the applications are actually made public right. in the packet when we appoint. So. But we need to know what days you're doing this. Okay. Well, actually, we're meeting almost every well, day. You so. know, I, <laughs> you know, I, you know we should make sure that the public is very it? aware, and the public is invited to come to every one of them. And maybe that would be a good answer. No, I, I mean, think it would be helpful with no. so many boards and committees if you could tell us what nights you are holding which interviews is well, all I'm asking. We might be doing the same board on three different nights, just fair warning. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I think that's, I think yeah. one of the things we yeah. could do yes. um, in order to satisfy uh, 
the rightful concern, which is that we don't, the, the public can't know what, who we're interviewing, and there's 40 plus boards, is if we have eight interviews interviewing for three or four different committees, even the potential ones, we could list them. We don't necessarily need to list the individual's names. We could say But we don't know what they are until we see so the individuals. So I also posted yeah. all, of, all eight or 10 meetings like a month ago right. before we even sent out the letter, right? Like right when we sent out the letters, right. we, we um, sat down and took all the dates that they were available and we just posted for all those dates, whether we're gonna need them or not just so they were posted so that people would know what days and so that if people got back to me and said I can't do this date, I would be like, okay, here are some other dates you could do. So that's also why the agenda was just um, that one line because I posted it a very long time ago. Uh, well, I, I like the. I think it's great that they're posted in advance like that, even if with a, if it's a vague agenda. But once we get closer to and we hit that forty-eight hour mark, let's we can keep it high level. We're doing trails, conservation, FinCom, whatever. Put up a not packet schedule. Say, you can just add a page. Yeah, yeah. As a don't mess up the posting, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because a lot of times I don't know who we're interviewing until I get there. Right. Because they just called up and said, I have to cancel, and then someone else fills the slot. So Caitlin's done a tremendous job yep. trying to juggle. Remember, we're, gonna, we're hopefully, God willing, we get to a point of 150 people. Now, hopefully we'll get that many, but um, including the alternates. And, and to juggle, and, to, and you know, everybody has a busy schedule, so we're trying to give them options, which means Dan and I have been, we'll be doing this 10 times rather than usual one or two. So but I think this we'll do the best that we can. Around yeah. To have at least those that we know okay. listed, it yep. satisfies some of the request, and then the rest, you know, with, we can even put a line saying the schedule is in incomplete. Incomplete. Yeah. There may be changes to yeah. this. I like Dan's idea too of, of um, <clears throat> you know, if he may not know that in, until an hour before the vast meets, they can if that can just be posted up to, um, too, so that people will get a little bit of a heads up of what's going on. Okay. Understanding it's the best you can no, do. Yeah, I can try and post like the right. schedule um, as early in the day as I can. Yeah. 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 Ye
um, whatever meetings and approvals were needed were, do were done many years ago. I understand. Um, if you're willing to uh, send me an email and get, get some contact information, mm -hmm. our assistant town manager is the best one to follow right. up with you. Okay. Honestly, this is the first I've heard of this issue in that area. I've heard other issues when he was newer, but not recently. Yeah. And we've well, heard some issues of people who are already living in there. Yeah. But uh, we've heard issues of, of people who are already like from yeah, Johnson Woods residents right. themselves. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Uh, right. Yeah. I, I, I wonder. Just oh. complete uh, another phase of where there are more wetlands. And so, yes, for him, for sure. <laughs> um, so. Uh, B Bob, do we know, um, I mean, that's probably a question for Jean, she's not here, and, and, and maybe we can send Bob an email. But in, in you know, when CPDC approved the project, mm -hmm. were there any provisions in there for making sure that... Extensive. That, yes. you know, wildlife issues are well, dealt with? Well, there was extensive provisions. I can't specify how much was specifically right. on wildlife. <laughs> yeah. If yeah. there wasn't an observed problem at the time, no. Okay. But right. things like rats, absolutely, the Board of Health would be all yeah. over that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, that might be a good thing for Jean to follow And the for. rats have just showed up like this year. It could be because also digging up a West Street at some point. But I have noticed an influx okay. year over year of lots of different types of animals. Okay. Um, and uh, so just my plan, I don't have children. My plan is to leave my home to the town as an open space if it should want it or the National Audubon Society. <laughs> probably can't do that because I can't afford to repair damage that's done from all of this influx of animals so okay. so <laughs> I'll probably right. have to sell it so in any case I, I, I wanted to bring this up as I appreciate a concern that. Okay. Um, and I don't know how many of the people have this concern but well I it's the first time anybody came here yeah, expressing it so why don't you Send yeah. the town manager an email okay. and, and Gene will follow Thank up. Coming. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for bringing our attention. Invite more hawks. Any other public comment? Okay. Bob, your report? Let me just do one quick one. Yeah. Um, I just got a text from the police chief. Uh, it's all over the news, the 6 o'clock news, that there's a uh, pursuit that originated in Reading and has ended in a crash in Georgetown, and that's not accurate. It, it was a crash. It did uh, go through Reading, but it originated at Stoneham, so there's no Reading officers. But it's being reported on the news that it was Reading police chasing someone up to Georgetown. That's not accurate. Okay. Well, normally, that's Record. not the protocol, right? We, we hand it off as, it, as it, it goes. Situations vary. Yeah. It depends. We have mutual aid with our border towns so that we could do that. As you get beyond right. one town, it's it's uh, usually it's not the case. Right. right. Yes. All those are, okay. Well, so that's all. Well, well, we're safe we're rest. In the 0867, everybody's safe and safe? Yes. Okay. Um, if, Bob, just a quick see, see, checking to see if this email that went to all of us that but we don't respond to, there's an email from someone about Washington Park and speeding by Washington Park. Did you what day? see that? Um, uh, that earlier? That no, it was, I think it was last, last Thursday. Yep, maybe? It was last week. Okay. Just before. It was after your packet. It was oh, after the right. packet. Yeah, I right, have that. Right, yep. right. It'll be in the next one. Yep. So if you, if you could. The, yeah, the, the police have responded by planning to set up this message boards down there and excellent the speed okay. counter. Great. Great. Okay, thanks. Bob, any, uh, anything else? No, that's all. That's it? Okay. Um, I have a question for Bob, actually. Uh, Bob, I thought I saw on one of the agendas the water tower was going to be discussed at one point, but I didn't see it on today's agenda. Do you know when that's coming? Uh, let's look. Right now it's listed in the next meeting, um, two meetings from now, sorry, July 10th. Thank you very much. Um, I think one of your members wasn't going to be here the next meeting, so we rearranged it. Got it. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, our friends from the school department are here. You want to come up and share with us? Do you have a, um, <laughs> 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 a better camera angle? Yeah. Oh, no. Are you sure? Yeah. Dr. Doherty, Ms. Stab, Ms. Wilson, welcome. Thank you. To the rarefied air of Highland Street. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, three years ago, for those of you that were on the board three years ago, um, we came to you. Uh, to discuss an intermunicipal agreement uh, with Wakefield for the Post Academy, I actually think which I is that. a program for students um, in 18 to 22 years old. Right. Um, 
The three-year agreement is up. Uh, as you can see uh, in your packet, there have been some changes made which have been vetted out by uh, Wakefield uh, at this point and the town manager of Wakefield. Um, so as part of the intermunicipal agreement, the school committees and the board, select boards of both, and I'm not sure what Wakefield is now called. But they're they're council. Town council. Town council. council. Um, Let's see. Have to CIO. approve it. With an, with an I. Right. <laughs> CIO. <laughs> have to approve it so that uh, we can continue the, uh, the agreement. So uh, we are here this evening um, to answer any questions that you may have about the agreement. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Carolyn, and she's going to talk a little bit about it. Um, but we'll be more than happy to answer any questions as well. I, I can talk a little bit about the programmatic piece and then I'll turn it over and we can talk about the agreement. Uh, for those of you who were here when we came three yep. years ago, this is um, for students 18 to 22 that we continue to need to provide special education services for. Um, this program focuses on life skills, it focuses on community opportunities for our students, social skills, um, and some academics for those students who need that as part of their programming. We have a wonderful space in Wakefield that we're utilizing that's been rehabbed. It has a kitchen space, it has washer and dryer, it's on the bus line, the students are out in the community. Um, they have been doing internships kind of all over this area, Melrose, Wakefield Hospital, um, the, the Wingate in Reading, they come and they intern in my office um, at the Rise Preschool and they do lots of um, out community outings and they also annually host a Thanksgiving dinner which we are invited to where the students in the program prepare um, all the food and everything for um, the administrators and for alumni to come to. So we have um, kind of seen some fluctuation in our numbers but we continue to have a population of students who require this type of programming and we see the benefits and the opportunities our students have and the ability for them to expand their social network within our geographical area. So there aren't a lot of programs that provide this in this area that keep mm -hmm. students close to Reading. And so this is a really unique opportunity to do that work. How many um, how many students are Reading students are uh, I know it's got a yeah. different so year. So this but. year we had two students in the program, one aged out kind of early in the year. So we've had one student all year. We're anticipating for next school year we'll have two students and then we're going to go up to three and, and then another three. So we're also working with neighboring districts to join or tuition students in. So um, we're hoping Stoneham is going to be tu tuitioning a student in um, this coming year. So is this Wakefield's program that we are participating in or is this something you guys got together with your counterparts in Wakefield and said, you need to do this, we need to do this, let's... Yeah. We, yeah. That's exactly it. We came together, we said we both have this population of students and the challenge is when you are a smaller school district like we are, to have a viable program for this population can be very challenging. Right. And so to come together and say, you have a population of students, I have a population of students, let's do this together, because as we outlined in our memo, the cost for sending these students out of district is significantly more, and it potentially places those students outside of this right. geographical area, which yep. what we want for our students who are 18 to 22 is we want them members of our community, and we want them practicing those life skills, those internships right here in Reading or close to Reading because this is where most of them are going to live when they move into the adult system. Right. And, um, and so basically it's it's public school? Or, yes. Or so? yes. Okay. yes. Hmm. Yeah. I mean as you know we've done lots of things on our end with Wakefield mm -hmm. and, and so um, I guess my other question is is that you know um, this is terrific and it sounds like it works otherwise you wouldn't come and try to do it yeah. again. Um, are there other opportunities, you know, where, uh, other things with other towns? I mean, we lo we're looking for that stuff yeah. all the time. I mean, yeah. efficiencies, things that, you know, let's get together and do this or that. Are, are, are those things that, you know, you, you look for? We absolutely we, we do. For this program, it's definitely looking for other districts to tuition their students into the program, which because it's capacity, obviously. It, it right. is capacity. Right. We do look for other opportunities right. in our own programs to tuition students in, but again, we do have capacity issues. We need okay. to ensure we take care of the Reading students before we start to look mm -hmm. to bring other students into the program. But this is this program here, we feel that there are other opportunities if we can get other districts. Mm -hmm. 
and to join. We also have an intermunicipal agreement with Wakefield for food, with food services. Oh, you do? Yeah, so yeah, we, we just renewed mm -hmm. last year. That one. I think that's last, last year. Yeah. Yeah. So some of the items we did in looking through this contract going forward is the first three-year contract was a 50-50 split. So regardless of the number of students, it was split 50-50. Mm -hmm. We've worked closely with Wakefield now that it was split based upon the number of students. Yeah. So if we, and right now we have fewer students than they do, so we actually, this is more beneficial from a cost standpoint. The other part that will be helpful that we've asked them to add in, which happens when you can break the finance people, is that the headcount will be done on a quarterly basis. So in an instance where we have a student age out, we do not have to pay for that student the entire year. We pay for the student for the portion of the year. They're in there. We also were able to negotiate out. Um, we were paying a capital cost because they had filled out the program at the beginning. We were able to negotiate that out and said, we're done. You had your three years. We're not going to continue. So it's, so it's, it's Wakefield's facility, Wakefield's educators? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Yeah. And, and, okay. Yeah, great. Good. Yeah. Okay. This agreement's been reviewed by town council for completeness, correctness, all the changes yeah. you made. Yes? And, yeah. uh, and the school committee, I believe... The school committee did vote to approve it, approve it, it last Monday. Monday. Has Wakefield yet, or, or are we... For, we Wakefield, for, they one did. of theirs did, I think. The they're school select, committee they're select, they're select... What are, what are they now? Right? Town council. Town council. Their councilors Our council. Council. approved it. I don't know. The school about. committee is in June. Is in June. Is in June. Okay. So we are, we're all within a week. Andrew? Of each other. So I, I notice in the contract you have, it's per on a per student basis up until you get beyond a 70-30 split. Is that correct? So in other words, uh, we or they could never contribute. I think contribute. that was an example. That's that was, um, it was an example such that it said if, if one quarter was 70-30, the next quarter is 60-40, they don't go back and recalculate. The only okay. piece we did add was, I was also you trying to protect zero students. Yeah. We have zero, zero students, so this is also a new concept. To the extent we have no students, I did not feel we should have to pay yeah. a large portion. So there right. is a 10% floor, but that basically keeps our interest mm -hmm. in the program, knowing we may have periods in which it does not <coughs> wait. So putting the floor in, because currently right now, if we have zero students, we would pay 50% right. of okay. the cost. So we tried to build in protections for mm -hmm. all. But also you have a a rough idea of kind of what I mean just kids who are in IAPs right now who are juniors and seniors in high school yep. who are you know are going to need some type of I mean you, you I mean it's so not a hundred percent right guarantee we, but. Have, we do know going forward what the next three years are anticipated to be and we would be less than 50 percent but you always have that if a family moves out of town they change right. their mind so I thought it was a good okay. safety net to put the floor in there so that we don't have to pay yeah. if we don't have the population. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other questions? Do you want to make the motion? Or are you done? Or done. No, I'm, I'm done. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, move the board, the select board to approve the intermunicipal post agreement with Wakefield as presented. Second. Any uh, further questions or discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Eyes have it five zero. Thank you. No, this is great. Keep, you know, in. keep coming with more of these. I mean, any any time that we can just work with efficiencies, it's it's just a great thing. So thank you. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Um, next up, 375th celebration committee update and request for Memorial Park. Yes. All right. So who's here for that? Anybody? Actually, anybody's come, come up. Come up. Come on. Sit there. Is that just the secretary signs, or are we all sign? No, all, all five. Looks like, looks like five spots. Okay. Yep. Laura, you're part of the festivities as well? I am, sir. All right. And well, we know it's going to be a good time. No. <laughs> <laughs> we know it'll be a tight ship. <laughs> yes. 
Um, thank you for having us tonight. I'm Phil Rushworth. I'm the chair of Ready 375. I'm joined uh, let the rest of my committee members and introduce themselves. Alan Folds, Vice Chair. Amanda Folds, uh, General Member of Steering Committee. Peter yes. Robertson, Clark. Ace Folds, Treasurer. And Lucia Corbett. Shannon Cahill and Bernie Harper, thank general member. Mm -hmm. Laura. <laughs> 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 Laura the Jack. Got it. <laughs> Jean Borowski from the school committee uh, is not here this evening. She's also on our committee. Okay. Um, we are here tonight to ask for a waiver to use Memorial Park past its closing time of 10 p.m. to show a movie on July 3rd. Uh, because the movie is an hour and a half, if we start at 8.30, uh, we'll go <coughs> past uh, 10 p.m. Uh, so we're looking for the uh, select board to give us a waiver um, so that we can we'll end the movie some, some point after 10, but probably no later than 10.30. Um, and then we also wanted to give you a brief uh, update of where we are with all of our uh, happenings in the last uh, few months, so I don't know. Which, which you'd like why don't you uh, why don't you just sort of tell us generally what's going on and then we'll tackle the waiver at the end. Okay, um, so for the on and off uh, for the past five years, uh, some of us have been getting together uh, to, to uh, plan Reading's 375th anniversary, which is uh, next year in 2019. Uh, we, uh, as a committee, really started getting working uh, a year ago, uh, and we've decided rather than have a year-long celebration, we wanted a concentrated uh, two-week period with events. Uh, so the dates that we've selected are uh, May 31st through June 15th, excuse the typo in the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, we're looking to kick off the event with an opening event uh, on Friday the 31st of May, um, and then have a grand ball possibly on the Saturday, uh, June 1st. Events uh, from that haven't been scheduled yet during the weekdays uh, from the school department uh, and the senior center, uh, Pleasant Street Center. Um, a porch fest, which is a musical uh, event um, that would be held around town uh, on the following weekend, ending with uh, a, a a version of Friends and Family Day with lots of things added to it. And I say that because the Lions Club, as you know, does Friends and Family Day in the Birch Meadow area. We're looking to uh, add on events to that to have uh, more activities for the community to enjoy in the Birch Meadow area, ending uh, with fireworks. So we'd like to increase the amount of fireworks that we have because, <laughs> you know, we don't turn 375 every, every day. So we want it to be a, a, a big celebration. So uh, we're sort of staying away from graduation weekend on that Sunday. Oh, so graduation, okay. Oh, yeah, so we okay. won't be anywhere near Birch Meadow that, that, at that time. So uh, we're talking to lots of uh, organizations, clubs, committees, individuals, uh, historians about uh, different potential events. And we're gonna be announcing some of those at our, our one year kickoff meeting on Thursday uh, that we're having. But um, we thought we'd give you a little preview of, of the time frame and Write down on your calendars. We're looking for uh, everyone who's watching and 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 uh, here tonight to, to participate and come to some events celebrating Reading's birthday. Just a quick point: we have Friends and Family Day today is run primarily by the Lions, but also Friends of Reading Recreation are a big part of that. We have had preliminary discussions with both groups, and they're very much on board. They, they want to be a part of this. We we have formal meetings with them coming up, but they know what's going on and they want to be a part of it. Yeah, so the, the school department um, wanted to get through this year before they committed to what was happening in their spaces. And um, you know, be, with the new principal coming on board at the high school, we wanted to talk to them about um, you know what could be happening in, in the different schools around. So um, the superintendent and I said, let's let's wait till the school's out and then we can figure out what's happening. Uh, yeah, you had him right here. I know. <laughs> you know we, we've been we've been meeting with lots of people, so he he knows that we're, we're but we want to talk to him about that. So um, you know, we we we're using sort of what happened in 1994 for the 50th as like a foundation but we don't want to copy or uh replicate the events exactly that happened for the reading's 375th but um sort of the the compact time uh period um we thought was the, the best way to for people to not only ha have a great time but also remember it because if people were in the community during the 350th they remember it. We wanted people to have a memorable experience and have a, have a good time. So. Have, um, have you included, um, or, or part of your group, people from the library, 
Parker Tab, or I mean, just some. I'm, yeah, I mean, there's actually things that just with came both in. Groups. Okay. Yeah, we have, if, if there's a group out there that we haven't met with, uh, yeah, the, the library will be hosting an event. Um, uh, you know, friends of oh, friends of yeah. Parker Tavern. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. The Y. The YMCA. Y. Um, I have you know, this today. I talked to recreation. We're talking to sport, sport, youth sports groups. Um, We've also very, met with uh, Colonial Chorus, and they have a meeting coming up with the uh, community singers and one of our players. So we're, mm. we're trying to reach out to. Maybe as they many. can program or do a play about. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so I want to run a 5K in buckled shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking it was a 375K. So we've been doing fundraising events. Our next fundraising event is Friday, June eighth at RCTV, another trivia night. It's not writing trivia; it's general trivia, uh, and uh, we we are tickets are still available. We would love the select board to purchase a table, and uh, I don't know, Laura, would they have to post for that? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like they're sitting at the same table. Okay, so don't so buy six table or five tables. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, it, it's it's a fun night, and um, you know you don't need to yep. be you know know all reading history. It's not a reading uh, yep. history night, so it's just general trivia. Uh, and then uh, our first official event will be uh, uh, when uh, what are the next time? It was a Tuesday, July 3rd. Uh, we're hoping to do a movie at Memorial Park. We have an inflatable screen. We've got the projector. We're teaming up with um, RCTV uh, to use some of the, their technology to, um, to show a movie in the park. It'll be a fr family-friendly event. Uh, we just heard today that we will have music <coughs> beforehand, uh, uh, live music. Live. Yeah. Um, as of right now, we don't need um, a health permit, but that's something that we're talking about. Maybe um, adding on to this to see if we can have you know concessions or something like popcorn at the event. So we're food encouraging trucks, people, maybe, or food they trucks, or, or or encouraging people to bring a uh, picnic. It's the day before the Fourth of July. Reading doesn't celebrate anything really for that time of year. So uh, Wilmington does fireworks on the second. Uh, Wakefield does them on the fourth. So if you're in town and you're not away, come down to Memorial Park if it's like one of us. And now, uh, just 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 on that, um, I, I, obviously, if you canvass, I mean, you know, I haven't heard anything one way or the other. I don't know, Bob, if we've heard about anybody thinking this is not a good idea. Well, why don't you talk about the neighbors you talk to? We have talked to some neighbors. I don't know how much percentage, but we have talked to several neighbors, and there seems to be no issue at all. Mm -hmm. <coughs> And where the park does close at 10, I don't think that would be there much past 10.30. Yep. Um, and um, last week, uh, Ryan, Ryan McKee uh, joined one of our subcommittees on logistics. Oh, so he said, well, if, if you can't get a waiver to go past 10, he can get us a brighter projector so we can start a little earlier. Because right. that's the issue. On July 3rd, yep. the sun sets so sure. late that yeah. um, you know, we'd have to start when it, when it's, it's, it gets down past the trees and we're going to see what, what we're showing. So. Okay. Um, this was sort of a map of that I put together of where, where I thought we would set up our event. Have the screen in between the playground and what was the old bandstand area because we have to get power. That's where the electrical is, and then just have people sitting um, in between or in between the screen and the, where the skating areas are. Um, okay. Uh, both the police department and myself just view it as somewhat. Um, I don't know, administrative that you give the waiver, there's no reason you shouldn't. It's it's fine for yeah. public safety or convenience. Yeah. yeah, I mean, people have a right to go to the park till 10 o'clock anyway, and this is just another half hour. And, you know, I'm sure there'll be people complaining about parking, but wow. you know, yeah. it's it's a park. So, um, Walkable yeah. riding. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Carpool, ride their bikes, right. their skateboards. Yeah. Um, What's the movie? <laughs> we can't tell you, but we will tell you this got baseball and fireworks. Uh -huh. and really? And any select, any select, <laughs> any select, <laughs> select <laughs> people <laughs> acting in this, no, being asked no. to be asked? <laughs> Angels in the outfield. I'm sorry, what did you say? Any members of the select board being asked to, to play a role in this movie? Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Any any other questions or I actually I'm not grant the waiver. Well, I 
Yeah, all right. <laughs> 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 That's a lot simpler than what I was Second. Do you ever, do you ever, did, did you write something? I, I have just, something written. Well, just, you know, for the, <laughs> to honor your effort, why don't you read it? <laughs> all right. This is probably five times longer than it had to be, but move that the select board authorize a waiver extending the hours of use. Alvarado moves and moves. Hours of use in Norman Park until 10.30 p.m. on July 3rd, 2019 for activities related to the Reading 375th celebration, and you can have this copy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Second, but I'll take your clean one. Second. Um, any, any discussion on that motion? Yeah. Yeah. All those in favor? <laughs> Opposed? Five zero. Um, good luck. Um, I, I I could just say on the on trivia night, um, it seemed like it was less than a year ago that you did it. Um, oh, so it was, Vanessa, you weren't uh, um, you weren't on um, the board then, but I know Andy, you were there. Yeah, I was there. John Arena, you were. Oh yeah, but you weren't. You were I not, not a member of the night. No. You, you, no. Um, but um, my my advice is is that if you um, if you are going to participate, make sure you get at the Steve Kruk table. <laughs> yes, because you yes. can basically yeah, right. be you know a sidecar. <laughs> so um, Bryce is not here. <laughs> so unfortunately, I won't be there. It's my that's the weekend of my son's graduation. But oh. you know, um, if any you know. I, I, Folks haven't done before. It's a great, it's a great opportunity. I don't know if we bought a table or if we just showed up. Uh, actually, you know, actually, I sat on the table with John Arena. You were at a different table. Yeah, I didn't we, have Steve. If we were at our own, own table, but I would encourage folks to do it. It's a lot What's of fun. What's the date again? Yeah. June 8th. Friday, June 8th. Okay. And our website is writing375.com. Tickets are available on there. You can purchase them. Um, the other thing too, just I would encourage, as as you know, it seems like. When is it? It's a year away. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and it just seems like that's a long time. Um, I would maybe invite you to come back, maybe quarterly. Come, yeah, just give us right updates, um, Bob. You know, just uh, there may be some yeah, other things as as you're planning events that you might need. Um, I think it's tremendous. I mean, there's not very many places in the United States that can say that they're celebrating their 375th birthday. Um, and I wasn't here for the 350th. Um, yeah. Just I came just on the other end of that. Uh, I plan on being here for the 375th and maybe even the 400th. <laughs> so um, I think it's a great. And the other the other piece of advice too, um, I, I, I know it's a it's a great working group. But as you go through these things, try to recruit more people. There's a lot of folks who might not have been here last time or who are new that have, you know, a lot of younger families just you know might have ideas for events might have ideas for like who have skills that you might not tap but just you know try to make the group as big as possible and that just sort of builds momentum for it as well yeah we're and if i can put in a plug in for our event thursday at rctv we're having our kickoff meeting 365 days to running 375 anyone's welcome to come at seven o'clock to come find out about the events that we're having um and sign if you're interested in helping out you can sign up for a committee Great. You got to make sure town meeting's done by the end of May. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving it along, right? <laughs> right. We'll just be, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Thank you. And now, okay. So yes, um, we're going to uh, briefly go into executive session to discuss. Um, strategy with respects to interest in real estate so do we yes i'll uh, do it yep. oh by the way just yeah. our intention is to come back yeah that'll be in the, the motion, motion needs oh, okay. to say that yeah. move to go into executive session to discuss interest in real estate where the acting chair declares that an open meeting may have a de detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the body and to reconvene an open session approximately 8 30 p.m great great is there a second second there's a roll we have to do a roll call vote for this uh, mr halsey Mr. Edsbanger? Yes. Ms. Alvarado? Yes. Mr. Friedman? Yes. Mr. Berman? Yes. Are we moving or staying? Let me go along. No, we'll, um, well. Best move. Best move. Best move. <sighs>
actually, you know what? Stru uh, in the UK, they came. Uh, this uh, guy, restaurateur, came up with an idea. They don't serve straws in the restaurant. But what they do, they have pasta straws. Little like oh. little thing. Right, and it does not oh, change cool. the flavor of any of the drinks, uh -huh. and you can use it as a straw. It's better than the paper things, which fall apart in you know two seconds, and they're biodegradable. So this, they also ban styrofoam, so they've pretty much killed off the take-home, take-out business. Right, and that, no Dunkin' Donuts. All right, so we are back in session. Do we have to do anything formally, just to, or just to say we're back in session? So, um, thank, hey, we we're, we're just gonna leave. We'll just like, leave you guys here. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. So um, we're back in session, and we're and we're here um, uh, with um, uh, Julie from uh, uh, Executive Director of the Housing Authority, um, and and Tim Kelly, one of the board members. Initially, when we kind of had gotten together, we, we had thought, and I think it was more my, uh, me, maybe me dropping the ball more than Bob. We thought that once we sort of knew we were going to have this meeting, sort of get the word out right away. So rather than give you guys about 30 seconds of notice <laughs> to post and everything, so my apologies for that. But the reason why we sort of moved our meeting up um, and 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 was important to kind of meet now is based on the letter. Uh, Julie, that you had sent me or sent to the board about the uh, the resale of the unit at Gazebo Circle, um, which kind of has a clock, a, a ticking clock, sort of attached to it, so that um, uh, the owner is sort of given notice that, that she wants to sell it, and under the deed restriction that's in place, there's a there's a window of time for us to decide if we want to for, for you guys to either buy it or or whatever, and so. Given that that June, th the, the expiration of that 30-day notice is June 3rd, I sort of got our board together earlier because one of the options, obviously, and Tim, you brought it up when you were here um, last time, is that uh, the potential use of housing trust fund money to basically, you know, subsidize that so that we can then in turn sell it to um, someone who the state would deem affordable, and therefore we would have add one unit to our affordable housing inventory. Subsequently, I've been working with um, sort of our uh, our consultant to kind of say, well, you know, what would that sale price have to be, right? In order, or how much would the subsidy have to be in order for the state to deem that a quote unquote affordable unit? Um, and there's a whole variety of sort of factors that go into it. It's interest rates, it's debt to income ratio, it's a lot of different stuff and it kind of is a moving target. But the bottom line is, is that in order for that unit to be counted as affordable, um, it would have to sell at a price of around $200,000. Um, now, given that, um, from the letter that you sent us, that you have an appraisal um, that um, sets the fair market value at around three seventy, dollars and the owner is obligated under the deed restriction to sell it at a 20% discount, it means that there's sort of a almost a hundred thousand dollar gap which meant that really the only source of funds that we have to sort of fill that hole is the housing trust fund um, and so the purpose here and, and unfortunately I know Tim you're just one member of the board and can't speak for that but although we have a full board here is to really discuss sort of the appetite for spending a hundred thousand uh, dollars so that basically you can essentially kick in and, and, and do that, is that a wise use of funds? Um, so once we have that discussion, um, what I would hope to do, Tim, with you here and Julie with you here as well, is to say, well, while we're here, what are some of the other things that we can all be working together on, on the affordable housing front? What are some of the other things that, w that, that, that we can do, ideas that we have? Um, because obviously, um, you know, one of the things that our, our mission is to try to create as much affordable housing as we can to get to 10%. You have your mission sometimes co coincides with that. You have you also have properties to maintain. Um, so um, I, I would really like to be, have this be obviously an informal discussion because it's only, Tim, you're the only one here. But then to go forward with the, with our boards, you know, in future times where we can really sit down and kind of come through what we want to do. I mean, we have some ideas here. You may have some. But first, um, I want to just sort of throw open the idea of you know, trust fund money uh, being used to kind of, you know, at, at that level, given, Bob, I think we have about, what, 260, 270 left? 270, yes, yeah. Which would be pretty much almost, you know, a third of it for, for one unit. Um, is that wise? Is that prudent? Um, so I, I, I would like to sort of start off with that discussion 
and and then kind of go into the general discussion. So, from my perspective, I think that at some point, this trust fund money needs to be leveraged in a way that will do potentially more towards our. I mean, I realize that you guys have one goal. We've got kind of another one. They don't necessarily cross. Um, you're more of a maintenance organization, more of a, a development organization, really. So um, that money's been earmarked. Um, well, in my mind, it's earmarked to develop. Um, and so that in mind, to take you know such a substantial amount of it, you know, to kind of do one, is not something that I think is particularly in line with the mission of what we should be doing. That's just my thought on it. Any other comments, thoughts? <clears throat> I, I'm actually inclined to agree. When we first had this conversation, the amount, the anticipated amount coming from the front is going to be, was anticipated to be less. At a certain point, given that there's the limited amount of funding that's there, 100,000, um, it just, it's, it's more than a third that's being pulled out um, to save just the one unit. And I, I hesitated on this because, as we had discussed before, what this essentially means is we're losing one affordable unit. Um, not from our stock of hitting 10%, but from someone who could, would be able to otherwise afford this home. Um, but I would hope that the fund can be used going forward, um, if it's for developmental purposes or for something else, um, to bring in more affordable units into town. So I, at 100000 it's it's above what I am comfortable using I agree. to save the unit. Yeah, um, first, thanks for bringing this forward as a, so we could even consider it. Yeah. Um, it um, how, do you, how do you put a price on getting an affordable housing unit for our, to count towards our 10%? Um, but given the, you know, the, the, the minimal amount that's in the fund now, uh, taking uh, 100,000 out of that 200 some thousand, um, I, you know, it's a little too rich for my blood, as they say. Um, but I, I hope that if other units come up in the future where the fund, we can grow the fund, as, as um, Barry was suggesting, and then maybe down the road we could, we could work together to get um, where our interests coincide. So, sure. Makes yeah, sense. that's. I think that's fair, and um, you know, uh, uh, I can't speak for the board, obviously. Right. But, and, but um, and again, our I'm apologies very, for for the schedule. No, no, yeah. no, no need, yeah. no, no need at all. Um, you know, I mean, this is. I think that we can, you know, something we can try to do is just look at what, what can be done in the future. I know I, I discussed with a couple of you separately about, uh, you know, potentially changing the affordable, the Reading version into the state version, yeah. you know, and then we can, and then either we, you know, whether we are part of it, uh, we collectively as the housing authority uh, as a participant in that, or, um, or whoever is managing, if there is a new, uh, you know, trust fund mechanism um, for, you know, more concrete stuff. You know, this was just, a, as as this came up, this was a suggestion that we made and we didn't, you know, have, you know, we had estimates, but we didn't have the, um, you know, the number. So, you know, it was a moving target at the right. time. And I, I certainly think that's fair, that that's more than, um, you know, that's a large expenditure out of that. So, um, you know, I, I think that, you know, uh, our seller's attorney is here, and I think they'll be happy to hear from us. You just go ahead and sell it, and then we'll move on from there. So we'll go with that option, uh, and that gives her them some certainty too. But you know, I um, you know I think we can we can look at some other things in the future and see if if there's some you know some strategies that can be can be used. And again, I think Andy just mentioned it. There are other units that will come up for sale under this program and maybe in the future that might be yeah. appropriate or maybe maybe it won't be but they all sold the, 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 the did they all I mean, they all got developed at the same time yeah. right so presumably they all sold at that same purchase price 
maybe within a few thousand of each other. Well, some of them sold the too. So, um, they, you know, some sold initially. You know, resold. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I, I couldn't tell you. What, I, I don't. I don't have a good understand a, a good you know inventory of what was there and what has sold when. But initially, they all sold yes at one price. Right. So so I, late eighties. Uh, was it the late eighties? Yeah. So it was. Yeah. The, we permitted that process uh, back in 87, I think. Okay. So ones that sold then, you know, because they all have the same rider on it at, yeah. at that time. So ones that sold, did, did it go under the same kind of rubric where, you know, whatever the price was, it sold at a discount? Uh, and, and then, because I think the, the, the mechanism is, is that whatever the selling price is, you know. Uh, in, in the early years when they came up, we were able to, um, sell, get them, re, you know, make, oversee a resale to an affordable purchaser. Okay. So right. they did, I think, you know, there was a whole wave of them that turned over. I think Mrs. Graham has been there for, you know, Maybe from one the, of the beginning, originals. or I'm not sure if she's the first, mm -hmm. but if she's not, then she was the second. Okay. And, um, you know, so we were able to, and now I think it's just so far beyond. You know, there was, yeah. uh, I think our director at the time would have, you know, was really working hard to say, you know, and we probably had competing um, uh, appraisals. You know, your appraisal says this, our appraisal says this, you know, this is what we'll agree upon is the... So there's, a, I'm assuming, an agreement on that. Huh? I'm assuming there's an agreement. Well, we, yeah, we are. We, okay. Are we'll you talking now or... No, just until because you know in the letter it's just sort of like you've, est you've established, uh, but it'll go on the market. So the process yeah. it'll go on the market. Yeah, well, we're, uh, we're going to have discussions. Yeah, because okay. the appraisals at a certain point when it goes to the free market, right? Yes, don't really matter. Yeah. So oh, as far as other times, um, I think only. I think I don't think I think this might be the first one that's going to go to on the open market. We have purchased one at, at that option before. And then we ended up selling that after we sold it. Right. So, so you would have to. So basically, if you were to do that, you would you would you would purchase it at eighty percent. Yeah. Right. So whatever that number is, and then for you to re resell it, you would need to and have it count as an affordable unit. You would need the, the subsidy, right? Because yeah. you can, well, because right. you're gonna you're gonna buy it here and you're gonna sell it here. Yeah. Right. Just so the one that we so bought and then sold, we had. Um, we had somebody who was trying to sell it at the affordable price plus a dollar after we had agreed upon this was the price. So we ended up saying, no, 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 okay. We bought it at that price and then because we didn't, she wasn't trying to sell it at the full market price. Got it. Um, okay. So in order to just short circuit that, we purchased it and then we ended up selling it and, and released the, the, the restriction. Was that recently? Something went on. I don't know if it was one of these in the last three or four years. Uh, I think it might be longer than that, but I'm not forget. But it really doesn't matter. Yeah. It was just I, I a point of information more than anything else. The, 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 the other issue too, which would have been, which makes it more difficult now than maybe five or seven or even ten years ago, um, when a, a unit came up for resale, is that the, the, the growing divide between what is considered affordable and what the market has has risen. So, you know, I think. I think the person bought this house for one hundred and four thousand dollars back in the day, right? I mean, that buys you not even a garage right now. But the difference between the but what was affordable then and sort of market was a lot sm smaller. Market pr market prices have ri risen so much that so now to subsidize that costs more money than it might have done ten years ago. All right, so. Um, it, it makes it harder going forward too. I think you know working close, you know, just a more open line of communication. I think is good, which is what's been going on the last two weeks, which is great. You know, I think that's a you know that's a very healthy thing going forward. And you know, you guys have a certain thing that you're supposed to do, and we have a certain thing we're supposed to do. And if we keep talking to each other, we'll probably find some things that we could collaborate on. I think. Um, uh, who knows? We'll see. Sure, absolutely. I, I do think your idea of looking to the more uh, um, the more user friendly uh, housing trust, you know, approach that this was set up after ours was created is probably a really good suggestion. I think we really have to look hard at that, um, and you know, and figure out how that new board would be constructed. And we'll of course need your, you know 
collaboration on moving that, you know, moving to a different trust document. Um, so I think we got a lot to talk yeah. about. I think this mm -hmm. particular one was not one that's going to bear fruit for your purposes or ours, but you know, it got a, it, it got, it got us talking, right. which I think yeah. is yeah. Yeah. You know, we saw it as an opportunity to, you know, it doesn't, you know, from our narrow purposes, it doesn't, doesn't benefit us, right. you know, this, this, if we, if we were to go ahead and, mm -hmm. and do this money, but, you know, in talking with, with some other discussions we had with, you know, staff and with you folks, um, you know, we just thought it was a, an, an opportunity right. to explore yeah. and, um, See the thing I is, hope we didn't what, take up too much time. No, no it's actually no, no. It, 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 it's sort of a seller. Uh, you know, it's well. It's according, I mean, basically, according to the letter that you guys sent us, we're, we're within the window. Right? Oh, we so, are right now. Yeah, so we, you know, you know. we would, would like to be able to to get her to, right. you know, her to be able to to move, on, you know, go along with her plans right. and, and move along. Um, you know, the the what shouldn't be lost is the fact that back in maybe 2000 or 2001, before there was even any state enabling legislation. Yep. You know, this town sort of said, you know what, let's create a housing trust fund so, you know, so that we could, we could at least assist in the development of affordable housing. And there was no guidance, right? I mean, because there was no, there was similarly, uh, John, to what we did with senior tax relief, right? There yep. was not a lot of guidance, and now they're talking about, you know, enabling cities and towns for enabling legislation so if they want to do it, they don't have to go to the legislature to create a special act. They're actually looking at our model so, as one of the... So the fact is that we were ahead of the wave and ahead of the curve and very proactive in terms of trying to figure that out. Um, but then in 2005, uh, you know, there was the enabling legislation and we never did anything with it. So now we've gone from sort of being ahead of the curve to behind the curve because the problem is, is that, you know, you brought this to our attention oh, here's a chance for us to maybe create a, an affordable unit. But in the interim, the way we have it structured right now, which is we, we really have a way, we only have a way to really figure out how to spend the money. We don't have a way, we haven't figured out a way how to work together to create, you know, create more, you know, create uses for, to add to the money. And I think that part of it is because you have, your, you know, you're doing your stuff, we're doing our stuff, and, and basically when you don't give anybody responsibility for it, nobody, it, you know, we both have responsibility for it, but then nobody has responsibility for it. So the idea of collapsing it into creating a trust with us, with the state enabling legislation is that, you know, we could, um, we can pick, you know, five, you know, junkyard dogs who've committed to affordable housing, put them on a board and figure out, let's all work together and figure this out, and now there's somebody who has it as a mission. Right, and and so now there may be more. So when it comes around next time, maybe instead of two hundred thousand in there, there's seven hundred fifty thousand in there. So spending a hundred thousand to create a unit isn't as painful. So I, I, I like that idea of it, and and you know, and any other things, you know, are there things that you you know, you guys, Julie, you've been out I think for a while. Any ways that you think that there are things that we can do to kind of do any, any other thoughts or concerns? I want to keep this an open dialogue, um, kind of going forward. And, what are, please, um, I feel that we've established a great relationship with Jean Delios, Lori Stanton, Julie Mercier, and now Liz Rust. Um, we, the, the beginning of all of this, we were emailing and talking, going back and forth um, on a lot of housing issues and sort of trying to get a, establish a baseline of where do we go with this inventory and how do we make this work. But we were still like, very, barely breaking ground. I can't even say we've laid a foundation, but at least we were starting. We all have our shovels together and we were digging in the same, same direction. So I can't imagine that not continuing as, as we go forward. It seems like a great, great collaborative working relationship. In order to keep moving this discussion forward, uh, could we add this, perhaps with the, if the authority would be interested in having the full board come together again so we can have this on the agenda and talk about the possibility of how to advance this and how to make use of this fund or what yeah. to do with it because it's been sitting here for years. Yeah, and it's been sitting there and, and not and not really. Well, we've chosen not to do anything with it at this particular moment, but what I we have this momentum. Right. I want to make sure that yep. we work with the Housing Authority to yeah. do something I mean, productive. That, yeah, Bob? 
I just suggest you meet, um, I think you have, other than your next meeting, which is full, you have three or four meetings in the summer. I suggest you absolutely use one of them, and we invite uh, probably Chris Heaton, town council, uh, with the goal towards uh, having a warrant article for November town meeting, which needs to be set by September. So that goal may not work, but at least that's an outline of some something to shoot for. Yeah. And then you can discuss, um, and you can hear from council the pluses and minuses of the path. But you can also, um, for staff's edification, sort of discuss how you see uh, a board being created, an independent <coughs> five-person board. I think state law says one of you has to be on it. Right. The other four can be on it. Some of them doesn't have to be. Um, there are discussion? models, though. There are a ton uh, yes, like of towns that have actually do some done work on yeah. my end because most of my peers would have adopted this legislation and mm -hmm. have such a, a trust fund uh, set up. Right. So I can get you that for the summer. Okay. That would be great. I think it would provide, I mean, from what I read from that consultant's report, yeah. it would provide greater flexibility. You don't yeah. need to have so right. many people in the room. And but it allows for proactive behavior. Yeah. That's the most important. Yeah. Right. I mean, basically, the only mechanism I think that we have currently is there's a mechanism to figure out how we're going to spend money. Right? I mean, it takes a majority of our two boards meeting together to vote to sort of release funds in there. Um, I've been on the board for, you know, I'm going on my fourth year. I don't remember, you know, where we've ever talked about, um, you've been on it longer than I, where we've talked about, okay, how are we gonna, how are we gonna raise money? It was all, it was sort of be like, kind of like, okay, this came up because, you know, this, this, this one wants to sell a unit, right? And otherwise, we might not have even had this discussion going forward and to sort of figure out, to revisit some of the work that's been done in the past and sort of, okay, recognizing that the real problem is that we don't have enough money in the fund, right? I mean, that's basically part of it. I would also suggest that a minimum we invite CPDC here because they are an authority that can, as a condition of a site approval, request a payment into a fund if there's not enough. That's if, like, if, oh, so kind of like what we did with, uh, units, you might say. like what we did with uh, the senior living. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if ZBA, we can at least run it by them as to whether they're interested. Usually not so much because they're dealing with the 40Bs. Right. It's a matter of statute, but the 40Rs tend to have flexibility. Okay. And I'd like to hear much more. So being the newest member, I'd be much, I would very much like to hear more from the Ring Housing Authority to see where you stand and where the board stands and what their views are. Um, because we've discussed this one idea of this trust fund, um, but I don't know what the background here is. So I very much welcome additional comments or observations on it. Sorry, additional comments or observations on the trust fund, the yeah, trust fund or, or other options. Not, not on the side of me to put you on the spot, but yeah. for a future discussion. Come on. Okay. <laughs> There's nobody here, anyways. <laughs> I mean, you nobody's know, tuning in. They think we're in the next the, week. You know, the trust fund. It's really, you know, we haven't proposed anything as a, you know, as a, as a developer. Um, and I think in recent years we haven't we haven't been focused on developing as much as we had previously uh, or trying to, you know, I mean, not developing, but, but getting extra units here and there, you know. Uh, and a part of that is because of the uncertain um, state of uh, affordable housing and the, our, you know, the, with HUD or, and um, in the funding. So um, I think the first bunch of years I was on the Housing Authority, we were always like, what, you know, uh, let's try to figure out something. Is some land in town? Is there something we can do? The property we can buy, and um, so we really haven't done that. So, and I think that is probably since that there's been money in there. We really haven't said, well, gee, there's something we'd like to do. We'd like to buy these units because you know if we're going to buy units, we really need to have the Section Eight certificates yeah. to put the tenants in there so we can get the rents. Um, so the only instances have really been when there's been developers who say, gee, there's some, there, we'd like to do this and here's some money. We'd like to, you know, have access some of that. And I think there's only been one time, one time that's been funds expended out of this. So, and there hasn't been a lot of people asking either. So I think it's been out there as the idea like, well, if somebody had, you know, somebody has a project that they would like to request money from and they can do that so i think that's that i think that's really where we've been you know certainly sat back and haven't been
proposing and, and every now and then you might hear well somebody might be interested in, in requesting some money from the fund for a project that's coming up that maybe the project never happened or, or, or something so it, I do think it's it's worthy of us looking at it in the future and you know whether or not the town elects to uh, put it on the warrant to change the the, the, the structure of the trust fund um, I think it's certainly something okay. that should be looked into and that's something that I want that I think makes sense to do in you know in meetings with with the housing authority too just so that you know we're all on the same page yeah okay um, any any other questions concerns Thanks. Thank you. Well, thank yeah. you. I know yeah. it didn't. Uh, did, don't apologize. No, I, I know. <laughs> but it's uh, you know I think this was a worthy discussion, right. and we have our answer. I think right. from uh, you know um, you know we really wanted to find out yeah. what the pleasure of the board was or what your opinion was, and even yeah. though we don't have the other members here, I think we're you know they'd be yeah. satisfied. It, it was a hard one for me because I mean you know as you know we struggle to create these units and. Um, you know, each one of these units is dear, as far as I'm concerned, and and you know every effort should be made to try to do it. It's just in this case, you know, without you know, it, it, it would deplete the entire fund. It, it just it didn't feel right. Although you know, I I, I would feel I felt better that we at least we discussed it and, and, and knocked it around and came to that conclusion. So, all right, thank you, great. everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for coming in. Great. Um, Okay, um, minutes. Okay, move the select board approve the meeting minutes from April 17th, 2018, as amended. Um, there were only uh, three of us there. Oh, yeah. yeah, I wasn't Which, there. Who was here? Who I, I know I've been to the all uh, of them. <laughs> yeah. I'm the only one I think has been to all of them. I think that was the one I mean. Yeah, Vanessa and I were school vacation. Yeah, okay. Oh, that was the one? Yeah, that was one. Oh, I was you, me, and Halsey. When we did the. Um, right. Oh, I forget. <laughs> it's I'm right next to you. I know it was important, but I don't remember what it was. All right, it was the night we did. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, school vacation was the week before. Yeah. That was the 12th. Right. You were here. Caitlin's still young. She yeah. remembers things. All right. The 17th was a snow cone. Yeah. 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 Right. That was that was the regularly scheduled that you could not make. And then I no, I made it. Oh, it was the regularly scheduled meeting. Okay. I didn't make ah, the, the one I didn't make the other right. one that was you know right. created. So is there a second? Second. Any discussion? I have no changes. Okay. All those in favor? Uh, I I stay abstain. In. So is it three zero two? Yeah. Okay. Move the select board approve the minute meeting minutes from May first, two thousand eighteen as amended. <coughs> Is there a second? I'll second it. I have some. I caught a, a, a couple of things, and, and this time I, I uh, highlighted them on the document so I can remember where they are. On page six B one, um, this is a small thing. Uh, under select and liaison reports, Mr. Ensminger, about halfway down. The Comca Comcast negations, I, I think it was oh, negotiations. Sorry. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. And then at the bottom of that, I under Mr. Friedman reported, blah, blah, blah. Um, I hope I didn't say they are also continuously working on implementing the new plastic bag ban, continuing to work on in implementing a, a bag ban. Does that make more s sense? Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> do you have it written out, Andy? It has. They are also continuously working yep. on, on, and that sort of, to me, implies, it's not a big deal, but it, it implies that they're, morning, noon, and night, they're working on, uh, okay. you know, continu you to continuing to work on. Continuing? Not, not a big thing. So procedurally, did you second this before you amended it? Yeah, we had a second. Yeah. Okay. Is that, I mean, don't you wait till they're amended before you move in second? No, you move in no, second and then yeah. make an amendment. Because okay. now I have to discuss. Just checking. Yeah. yeah. I think. Yeah. Don't, is this a test? <laughs> no, I, I'm <laughs> just asking. I'm, I'm not saying, I'm <laughs> asking. If there's no second, there's no motion to amend. All right. Uh, I haven't had my supper. I'm <laughs> sorry, I'm moving fast. <laughs> under under um, Lincoln Prescott 40B update, 
Um, yes. I think we, I stated I had a conflict of interest. Yep. Um, oh. Mm -hmm. um, okay, where are you? Yeah, for conflict of interest Yeah, conflict purposes. of interest purposes. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Got it. And that's kind of important. These are all essentially friendly amendments. Yes. No. Okay. I think um, under, you know, two paragraph paragraphs below that. I think it's Cadence, Thomas? I was wondering yes. what that is. D-E-N-C-E. Yeah. Okay. Oh. What is it? C-A-D-E-N-C-E. E-N-C-E. -E. Cadence. And it's okay. Thomas says? Like Thomas with a yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, the last yeah. name is correct. Um, and then um, under the Affordable Housing Joint Meeting of with the, uh, the Housing Authority, um, is it correct that we said if we do that we have to buy it off the owner? Um, or I thought it was we had to pay the difference uh, uh, between, you know, the delta that we talked about. Am I off on that? I don't, I didn't think we were buying it off the owner. No. Right? Well, actually, the Housing Authority would buy it. Yeah, but the yeah. only way they could buy it. The housing authority. I oh, right. that if okay, if the housing. Yeah, okay, okay, something right. like that. And the only way the housing authority could buy it yeah, is just if there's a subsidy instead of we right. To, right. 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 to keep it affordable. Right. right. Um, and then the last thing on the VAC, on the volunteer, we had a long discussion on the VASC. Oh yeah. Um, and I think um, the discussion was about interviewing. People who are for, yeah, incumbents yep. for uh, which no one else had applied for their position. That was I have what draft the language on that. Okay, yeah. go. Yeah. Take it away. Uh, so, under the vast second paragraph, half the board thought it was a good idea, while the others thought, and then I would recommend it was unnecessary and potentially intimidating to interview people already on the board when there were no other applicants. I can give you my sticky. Yeah. Sure. Okay. And then By the way, that's proving not to be the case. Well, I'm <laughs> glad to hear it. <laughs> if anything, it's the opposite. Yeah. yeah. And then there is the, the I, unfortunately, I my thing isn't scrolling. Thank you. Sure. But there was the um, happy to point that out. There is the there is the um, results of the vote in those minutes, right? Mine's yeah. not scrolling. Yeah. So yeah. I apologize. Yeah. It's right up on. Whoops. Yeah. No, I know. Behind me, Barry. Well, that's not helpful. Okay. Got it. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Okay. So that would replace everything after while the others okay. to the end of that sentence. Yep. Um, any other that was all editorials or ed ed edits? Okay, so uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? 5 0. Ready for executive? Yes, yeah, so else? again, um, uh, so, so those folks out there who are still with us. God bless you. Um, when I when I started the meeting, I said that, that we would end with minutes. Unfor unfortunately, there is another executive session that we are going to go to with respect to collective bargaining, and it is our intent not to reconvene. Move to go into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining, and if the chair declares that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the body, and to adjourn without returning to open session. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. Mr. Friedman. Say yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry we're taking the roll call. I thought you were saying I just seconded. I know, well uh, <laughs> Ms. Alvarado. Yes. Mr. Hensman. Yes. Mr. Halsey. Yes. Mr. Berman, yes. So we um we'll go next door now. Yeah. We'll go next door and I guess we stand adjourned. Uh okay.